All right, today we're gonna tie a variation of Kelly Gallup's Sex Dungeon. Uh, this is the, or a variation of the triple. This is the Menage Dungeon. I swear he comes up with the most clever names ever. But uh, there's just a, basically, I mean, it's just one substitute. You're throwing in some polar chenille. Um, for the ice dub and the schlopping on the body and uh, basically everything else is the same you know as far as the rubber legs and marabou over wings the tails the same uh, eyes deer hair head and uh, collar but uh, everything else like I said pretty similar on this one so it's a little bit quicker of a tie uh, because you're not dealing with the other materials you're not doing the wire and everything for the body but uh, we'll go ahead get started on this one uh, Daiichi 2461 hooks and my remote probably needs some batteries or something 2461 hooks uh, this is a size 2 in the back and then I got 1 and then a 1 aught I just like the way that it looks a little bit better it kind of proportions out nicely it, um, allows for a little bit more room on the head using a 1 aught and that way the head doesn't look lost going with like a 221 or whatever it may be so uh, size 2 size 1 and then a one aught for the front hooks what we're going to go with it all being a material list underneath the description of the fly as always if you want to reference back to it but uh, to get started on this we're going to take gel spun uh, same as the other dungeon or all of the other dungeons really and I've seen this is going to be the same color. If you watch the the triple dungeon that I did of Kelly's, probably oh, it's been over a year now. But uh, it's going to be the same color combination as black and purple. I like this one. This is my favorite color combination of all of them. But I'll do them in like a um, like a cream and tan mix or a brown trout look or a white fish look, something like that. But this is one that I like to tie and fish the most. So this is what we'll go with today. Um, starting out on this, just grab your marabou. We're going to do two, two plumes of black. Same as always, just measure this out the length of the hook. Slightly longer, if anything. And go ahead and start working this taper. We'll just take the black one, the the first plume, we'll take it on my side. Next one will go to the camera side. In between the two plumes, nothing new here. We're going to take some black flashaboo. I know this looks off-centered right now, it's a little far to the left here, but once I have the whole fly out, that'll, that'll be centered, so bear with me here, it looks a little, looks a little off right now. So, we'll just take this black flashaboo, same, same here. Run strands on my side, run strands on the camera side. Just a little internal flash, built in. And then we'll cover this up with a second black plume. This pattern, because it's tied with the, the ice dub, does inherently have a little bit more flash than... Uh, you know, just the standard triple dungeon. And like I said, it is a little bit quicker to tie. Because you'll see when we do the body, it's just one step. You're only tying in one material as opposed to three with the rib, the dubbing, and the schlopping. So it is a little bit quicker. So there's the marabou tail. And then, like I said, I'll take this stem and I'll work it on the camera side. 
all the way up to the front. Well, I'm not going to go completely up to the front. I'll leave myself about an eighth of an inch because we are going to tie in rubber legs and then uh, the fire's making a little bit of noise there. We're going to tie in some rubber legs and also um, the purple marabou overwing. So if I were smart, I could have saved a little bit of time and tied in this UV before I advanced my way up to the front. I'm trying to remind myself to do that on the next two. We'll see if I remember. Probably not. I'll get to talking and distract myself. It happens pretty easily. So. This stuff right here, um, you can use just the straight black if you want. Uh, this is the UV polar chenille, and I kind of like this. It just kind of matches the overall look that the rest of the fly has. It kind of has like this purple and bluish hue to it. So I tend to use this stuff as opposed to the straight black. And the camera should pick it up a decent amount. Um, I can. I don't think I have anything laying around tied with just the flat black, but it does make a little. It, it, there is there is quite a difference in between the two. This pack right here, for some reason, is really just all over the place. It's like these these fibers are really crinkled up. I don't know if they if it was just the way that it was packaged, but they're a little bit shorter than your normal polar chenille so you'll see me picking this out a lot more than I typically do when I run this stuff but it'll just take a little bit longer is all. Like I said you can see these are real wavy and just all unorganized but like I said I must have just got a, a rough package or something because I bought this color before and I didn't have this issue but we'll just pick it out take our time working through this and have a nice picked out fuzzy body on this this takes a little bit extra time is all just keep working that back trying to get all of the fibers you know pointing back toward the tail of the hook um, as best you can. Get out of there. Hung up in the eye. There we go. Go ahead and get that trimmed up out of our way. And we'll just peel this stuff back and work where we left off, just covering up with our thread right where we left off uh, when we were covering up the marabou. So next up on this we're going to take just two rubber legs for the back and lay these right over top. Two loose wraps, one right to left and the other one left to right then you'll wind up having an X over your legs. You can pick these up, get them right where you want them, set them how you want. And then come right back over this two wraps and then really cinch down. That X winds up really going into the legs and then they're, they're really secure. Plus they hang nice and straight. So really easy, easy way to tie this in. Now for the over wings on this I get pretty selective with with these I like them like you can see this one's pretty sparse I mean it would work for a back one um, I like to progress as I go forward starting you know with the um, most sparse and then up to the fullest at the at the very front um, this will be a good front one right here. You can see how that's nice and nice and webby. Just has a, it, it's like a marabou 
or a uh, woolly bugger marabou. It's it's that thick and uh, webby. So we're just going to take our time, and pick through these, try and find three good ones that'll save me from sorting through them three separate times. So you can see me play around with marabou for a couple of seconds. Uh, that's borderline. I'll put that one aside. Maybe nope. False alarm. False alarm. Getting down to the bottom of this one. And I'm running out of luck here. Nope. Nope. That one I might be able to make work. And I guess I'll go with that. If I have to, I'll double this one up. If it's too sparse. That was a really good pack of marabou, and it's tough to find a uh, uh, junk piece. I mean, this is all really good for, for tails, really, and uh, you know, palmer and marabou. But like I said, if this one's too sparse, I'll just double it up. I think it should be good. I'll tie it in and see if I'm going to live with it or if I want it a little, a little thicker. So just lay this right over the top, get a couple of loose wraps, and then you can really cinch down on these, make sure it's not going to rotate on you. And I have this going just probably a quarter of the way back um, from where I have my tail tied in. Um, I think I'm going to live with that one. I'll probably get the other hook tied in. And look at it and be like, yeah, it's too sparse. Should have done a second. But this will work. And then go ahead and just cover up that extra marabou with a couple of thread wraps, get everything cleaned up. Get back there. And then go ahead and whip finish. Your back hook is complete. And marker. Let's go ahead and wrong end. As always just touch this up a little bit. Cover up your white if you are using the, the white GSP. They sell it in black too. I just, I don't know. I, I don't really order it in any color other than white. It's just just as easy to touch it up with a marker. So before I go taking this one out of the vise, what I'm going to do is just you know, the old straw trick from from before. I stole this one from Kelly. Has a lot of things. Just take a straw, cut it right down in the center, and then throw this right over top. This keeps all of your materials out of the way. Um, it's so much easier to work with when you go using a rotary function. You don't have your legs flopping around all over the place. So, really clean, easy way to keep stuff out of out of the next hook. That's pretty sturdy. So. Onto the size one. You got the wire pre tied in here. Save a little bit of time. Let's me talk a little bit more about stuff that's probably really not all that important. Hey, okay. I'm the one in front of the camera. I get to say what I want. So, let me get these damn beads to cooperate. There we go. And go two small red beads. You can go one if you want. Um, two just kind of gives me the space that I'm after. So I typically go with two, but I've done them with one in the past and it doesn't really seem to make a big difference. Uh, get them close to where we want the distance. Make your loose wraps. Make sure that your wire is 
going straight back. Sometimes it'll want to kick off to the side when you time in one by one like I do. Um, so you can always just give your wire a quick twist and it'll go which direction you want it to. So we have our red bead here just barely touching. Our, our first red beads just barely touching. So then we're going to take the distance of these two reds and then it's going to be about the the length of our loop. Somewhere in that ballpark that seems to keep the hooks from fouling too much and it doesn't rob you of any motion. You go getting too much longer or too much shorter and you either have your hooks getting hung up on one another all the time or your fly just doesn't swim how, how, it's, how it's meant to. So that distance seems to be about the best that I've found. So next up on this I'm just going to find a junk uh, black plume here. That one looks eh, not quite good enough. This one will work. This is a good junk one. I mean there's, there's got two good. Um, there's really not a whole lot you can do with this. It has a really thick stem. Uh, the tips are all busted off, so I mean it's not going to be a tail. It's not going to be good for much of anything else. So we're going to use this for a cover. I'm just going to strip this down off to the side and then just peel these out. Get out of there. And then these tips are really sparse. So if you go using that for a cover, I mean, it's 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 it'll make a decent skirt, but you can make this a lot better just by picking that off, and then it's a lot more dense, and it covers your connection up a lot better. So I'll take this, just covering up that connection, going probably just past the eye of the back hook, and then get this wrapped in or get this tied in make your way back to the barb of the hook. I got a little too far back there. And then same thing, we're going to come on this side, or come on the opposite side of what we just took off, so you know you're going to be nice and even. Pick that stuff off. And then same thing, work your way probably, probably just past the midway point, or wherever it looks like, you know, it would be a good break for nice webby fibers. There you go, you got a nice connection. So we'll go on the camera side on this one. And then one thing that I do different now when I tie these patterns, and this goes for just about any dungeon, whether it's this one, that the standard triple, or you know, just the regular dungeon. Um, I started throwing... the accent color over top on this portion. So I'll find a decently comparable feather to this one, um, to the one that is already tied in, and I'm just going to lay this over top of it. It makes the transition a little bit better. Um, it's just a seamless stripe of purple down the back and it, it does fill the fly out a little bit it looks a little better in my opinion so I, I have started doing this and I'll work this probably an eighth of the way past the uh, the tie-in point of that front over or the back over wing get that tied in and you can see it's, it's extending past the skirt that we tied in. And then a piece of skin on my thumb I keep catching with my thread. Making a mess out of everything. So now we will go ahead and I remember to do it. Save ourselves a little bit of time here. Go ahead and tie in the UV puller before we go making our way to the front with this. And 
There we go. Get that tied in. Same thing, leaving yourself about an eighth of an inch up here. It's easy to do with this for a reference point. If you flip your wire over like I do, like I'll tie it in and then I'll take the tag and flip it around to help with the taper. Just leave that eighth of an inch when you flip your tag around and then you have a good reference point because there's a pretty, you know, I mean, it's not a significant drop, but it's a noticeable drop when you're running your thread over top of that. You can feel the difference. And uh, even if you do get a little bit of thread covering it up, you can still see it. So that's one little tip to help you out with the uh, distances on your, on your pattern. Okay, same thing. Now this is where you need to be really careful with your first probably two to three wraps because sometimes this UV likes to get a little wild and it'll come around and actually grab a couple of strands of this of this marabou like that one right there, one and two. I'm just going to get that out of the way. And you go making these wraps really quick and it can just spin a couple pieces of that and kind of mess up your cover a little bit. So just take your time getting those, make sure that you're not trapping the material. Let's keep working our way to the front on this one. Picking this out as we go. Just about probably two more wraps with this UV. No, I think I can squeeze in one more. There we go. Still have about that eighth of an inch left in the front that we want to get our same thing as always, or same thing as the back hook, you know, that rubber legs and the purple overwing tied in. Go ahead and peel this back, get things laying straight back. That and it gets things out of here. It gets that gets those strands out of your way. That way it's a little bit easier to tie in your rubber legs without having to battle wild strands of this UV. So same thing with this one. We got two rubber legs again. We'll go two, two, and then three on the front. And that one didn't didn't catch right. Get out of there. There we go. Making a mess out of this. There. I made that more difficult than it needed to be. Go ahead. Typically, I like to keep these all together and cut toward the end or after I whip finish, but they came apart and just didn't want to work with me, so I'm going to clip them right now. And I can tell already that I'm not going to like this marabou, but we'll see. I may double it up. not going to cut it. There's got to be a decent piece in here. Got to be something. 
I could have tied that one in, but then I would have wound up refilming because I'd get to the end and look at it and not be happy like I did with the one that's on the bench already. I filmed that one last week, and when I got to the end of it, I looked at the collar and I just wasn't happy. It was pretty bad, actually. I mean, it was one of the worst ones that I've tied in a while. I just couldn't put that one on film, so decided to reshoot. Surprisingly, that doesn't happen too often. You would think as picky as I am, I'd be refilming constantly, but it's not that common of an occurrence. Okay, so with this overwing, same thing, we're going to go just a little bit past where the purple is for that cover connection. And like I said, all this is is just a nice seamless strand of purple running down the back is all that we're after here. So one thing that I do different now than what I used to with these patterns. Go ahead and throw this in and then whip finish. We're good on the second hook. Get back here. That wound up being a pretty good piece of marabou right there. Pretty happy with that one. Alright, so we got our rubber legs laying straight down, marabou laid in over the top. We'll just touch up this white with the black marker. And we'll be on to the front hook. There we go. Same thing, I'm going to take the straw again. And instead of just stealing that one, I'm just going to throw a second one over top keep everything out of the way. So we got those back two ready to go. And then this is the final. This is the one aught. Got the eyes already in. They look like they're right where they need to be. Wires tied in. Start working our way back here and we'll get this connected, get the skirt on and finish this fly up. Same thing, uh, two red beads again. Throw this. Back portion, get everything where it needs to be. Gauge out your distance, like I said, a couple of loose wraps on this wire. Keep them loose just in case you need to adjust anything, like I said on the last one. This could use a quick spin that direction. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to cut this length down just a little bit. That looks good. Once you get everything how you want it, you can go ahead and cinch down on that wire. You don't have to go, you know, extremely uh, tight on this stuff. You can you can keep your wraps. I mean, you want them, you want solid wraps in there, but I mean, you don't have to go bending your dang bobbin or your hook trying to tie in this wire. Just make sure that it's good and secure. Flip this back around. Get some good tension on these again. Like I said, don't go Superman in it. Bending hooks or bobbins. And then we're going to cover up this skirt just like we did on the first connection. Same thing, not doing anything new here.
a little bit shorter than the other, so we'll just try and even things up. Just get some open lupus to the front and come back right to where the barb starts its ascent. I don't really like that too much. Surprise, surprise. I guess it'll work. Same thing. Take the same amount off of the opposite side of the feather. Just kind of bust these off and get these tied in. This makes a nice connection. I used to use the the uh, after shaft of the schloppen. Um, I still do every once in a while, but seeing as we're not tying with them, this marabou does essentially the same thing. It gives you about the same look. There we go. Got a nice covered connection there. And then find another little bit of purple. Same thing. Actually, just wet that one down that way. It's easier to work with. Going about a quarter of an inch, maybe between an eighth and a quarter of an inch past where we tied in the overwing for the second hook. Same as before, and I forgot to tie in the UV. Oh well. I knew I'd forget. Surprisingly, I got the second one. I remembered once. One out of three is not too bad. Trim this off. Set this in. Get that nice and secure. Now, when you bring this one up, stay a decent amount back. I would say it's probably a quarter of an inch right here between the center of my eyes and where I left off with that purple between an eighth and a quarter and don't let any material go past that because we've got rubber legs and overwing and also that's where we're going to be starting our collar and our uh, deer hair head so if you rush everything too close to the eyes it winds up getting really compact and it just doesn't quite look right so, leave yourself a little bit of space to work with. Good. Start working this through, bringing the UV up to the front. I got one wrap in there I didn't like. three or four wraps, go ahead and pinch this down and then pick out your fibers three or four more just repeat it until you get to where you want to tie this off go ahead tie off the UV get this out of our way. Things look pretty good. Get a couple of little bit tighter wraps in this just kind of just like before you know get this stuff out of your way it'd be a little bit easier to work with your rubber legs as I stumbled through that demonstration on the second one. Get out of there. Alright, set of three on this for the rubber legs. One, two, got your figure eight or your X right over the top. Work these where you want them. They're still pretty, I mean, it's e easy to move these things. I mean, even if you have to, you can pull them to one side or the other just as long as you don't uh, really wrench down on this just yet. And then once you have them where you want, go ahead and pull tight and get a couple more secure wraps in there.
Uh, actually, yeah, I'll leave that for now. The legs are secure, everything's where we want it. I'm going to pull this last overwing out, and this is the thickest one, the webbiest one of all of them. And I'm going to run this back. If you have to on this one, don't be afraid to double it up. Um, just make sure that you have your thickest one on the top. That way it'll give you a little bit more cover. That way, if you go putting a sparse one on the top, I mean, I guess it wouldn't really make a huge difference. I just like the way that it looks. I like the, the real webby ones on the top. Get a little bit more motion out of those too. So, all right, get that tied in. Make sure that it's running right down the center, not coming off to one side or the other. And then get it secured. And things are looking pretty good here. We're just about, well, I say just about, but we still got deer hair work, so that's going to take a while. It'll take a while to talk through. So, now that we're here, we can go ahead and trim these off, pull these tight, take off some of the tension, and then you can trim off your rubber legs. We're going to steal this straw off the back one, throw this over that, over the marabou and the legs. This one serves two purposes. It keeps your materials out of the way and then also when I trim the underneath side you'll see to make this trim a little bit cleaner um, you can push the straw up against the deer hair and it, it just gives you a nice clean cut on the underside um, to where otherwise you'd be flirting with cutting off rubber legs and probably having a stack that's very uh, deer hair under underneath just not as clean as what it could be So now this one is going to be strictly a collar. If you've watched any of the other dungeon videos, cougar, anything like that, this is this one is strictly a collar. It doesn't get used as the head or anything like that. Just take your time, get get this nice and clean, get all this all the junk out of there, and make sure that you've got like I didn't on the last one. Uh, sometimes with this black, it can be deceiving. Make sure you've got plenty of, of collar, plenty of material here for your collar, or else it just winds up looking lost. And a good measurement on this one, I know you're not going to be able to see this because the hair is black and well, it's dark inside the stacker. Just get your uh, deer hair, if you're using one of these bigger uh, Renzettis or, you know, bigger stacker, um, it's just about full in there. So that's a good gauge that I typically try to use on these. And get them, give that a quick stack. And I'm going to see if I have enough, if I'm going to be happy with this or not. Um, yeah, that's a pretty respectable collar right there. Probably could have got just a little bit more in, but I mean, we're on the borderline of being close. I think that's going to be enough. Too much more and it would be falling out of my hands and really tough to control, so I think we're going to stick with that. Now, my reference point for this one is I like the deer hair tips to be right about at the point of the hook. Not shorter than that, though. I mean, the point of the hook and I would say the the barb is the furthest that I would allow these, that collar to go back. So somewhere between those two points is what I'm going to try and measure this out at. I'm going to transfer this over in my hand here and then I'm just going to clip that nice and flush. I can see that straw is going to want to fight me a little bit. Give a turn to the right with the bobbin and then uh, 
just start working this collar down. Give your first wrap pretty loose. Second one, your thread starts disappearing. Then you work a third down in there. And don't really wrench down on it just yet. You want to spread this collar out a little bit where you got that nice half moon seal on that underneath side. We're nice and clean. Um, and now what you can do is go back through here and just work your thread through this stuff and it spreads your collar out everything's pretty clean and we had just a few hairs migrate down below and just take a quick trim with this and get them out of your way now on this portion right here um, We're just stacking hair. We're not spinning. I mean, it's virtually impossible to spin deer hair behind the collar or behind the lead eyes. And you don't need a ton of this stuff either. You don't need a ton. Um, you'll see here probably, uh, oh, I don't even know what the heck of reference to use for that. Um, maybe two pencil widths call it that and then I like to have the the butt ends or the stuff that I cut off closest to the hide facing forward and then I'm gonna trim these tips up right here and it just seems to make an, a cleaner transition from the tips to the actual collar right there than if you put the butt ends because if you miss one or two of the butt ends they're obviously thicker than the tip end and it just they, they really stick out this way it can kind of it's, it's a nice little merge in between the two so like I said we're just stacking these right here go ahead and everything's going to remain on the top half then we're going to come underneath and stack a box stack one on the bottom um, let me get these out of here and then I'll continue talking through this fly. Grab about the same amount, um, a little bit less if you want to. Uh, all we're really looking for on this bottom is just a cover and you don't want these things so compact that the hair is just you know, you, you want to be able to have gaps in this to where the water is able to get in. It's not like we're trimming up a, a D and d or a SID or, you know, a white girl, whatever it may be. We want this to actually have spaces for the water to get into and it'll help it sink. Also, it will shed water on the back cast, making this thing easier to cast. If, if you go wind up and you get this you get way too much hair in there it really does become a, a, a pain to, to fish and, and cast it, it really does so we'll just go ahead and get those stacks thrown in there make sure that you got good coverage all the way around uh, we got the top and the bottom pretty well covered now what I'm gonna do is just fold this stuff back and then I'm gonna take my thread and I'm going to go right around these eyes, catching this eye and then that eye. I'm coming behind the lead eyes, and that just kind of sticks the hair straight up and down. It's easy to manipulate now. You're able to have your hand right here, and you can see I can pull the majority of that stuff back, and I'm going to be able to put a stack in here and actually spin this one. So that's what we're going to work with here. Now we'll probably take... Oh, one and a half times what we take for the back stacks um, or for the top and bottom stack um, probably take one and a half times that and that's what we'll work with here you go getting too much more and your uh, your deer hair winds up like we were talking about earlier getting too compact and just too much hair in there so this one and a half times seems to be about right it gets you the coverage that you want to where you're still able to trim 
and get the overall shape of the head, but it doesn't. Let me just. But it doesn't get too much material in there, and you wind up having too compact. So I'm gonna move all of this stuff out of my out of my way. I'm gonna find the halfway point on this stack of hair, and this is what we're gonna be tying in. I want to get right to that halfway point. You have one, two loose wraps, two and a half, and then pull tight, you get that spin. See, we get that one full spin that we're after. We get that one rotation of deer hair. Everything looks good. Everything looks good. So now, we'll take this. See how this still looks kind of sparse in here? I mean, I know it's tough to tell with the, with the black hair, but uh, it still looks kind of sparse. This isn't compact in there, like if you watch the D&Ds or any of those. You, we're not sitting here packing this stuff in. We're keeping this sparse, and that was by design, so it's able to shed the water, and then it does accept the water when it's in it and it sinks better, gives you a better swim overall. You see some of the some of the commercial stuff um, you know whenever I'm in shops or whatever I like taking a look at the patterns. Some of the commercial stuff these, these heads are so compact that it just it it it'd affect the overall swim of the fly and lose a lot of effectiveness quite honestly so uh, I can't remember if this razor blades dull or if it's new find out real quick huh so just gonna take all of this just kinda brush this out get things nice and picked out here this will also get rid of any hairs that you missed on the first swipe through with the comb and then brace your hand right here and just draw this right over the lead eyes and it's relatively new relatively new blade alright then this one is just a really rough broad cut I just want that flat on the underneath side see how it has all this stuff sticking past the straw I'll, I'll worry about that once I get the top cleaned up. So now get your little half moon with your razor blade and then just work right through this pushing right back to your collar. There you can see the overall profile that we're after. We got a little bit of cleaning up to do. We got some hairs here that are running into the collar get those cleaned up the best we can and then we'll make one more quick trim here there we go that's pretty clean now like I was talking about earlier with cleaning this up, I'll try and turn this your direction so that way you're able to see what I'm talking about and hopefully not mess up the collar or cut my fingers. So I'm pushing this, I'm pushing my straw right up against the collar and see how it flares those hairs out just ever so slightly. That allows you to get a nice clean cut a nice clean break under here without cutting any rubber legs without cutting the UV polar or if you're using the schloppen like the original patterns done and there we go now you're, you can see we got that straw there you got the half moon from the collar on the underneath side that you can see gives that little sculpting effect but also, you're now going to be able to see your body because you don't have all of those wild hairs from the deer hair running through there. 
So everything's clean there, and then we're just going to take a little bit extra, clean up this collar piece some. I got some hair from the head working its way into the collar, and I can just pick them out really easy. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time cleaning that up. I'll go through and do some scissor work and everything afterwards on this head to just clean it up before I take the picture. But uh, that should do it right there. One thing that I always do with these is I go around the eyes. I like being able to see those red eyes, especially off off of uh, you know black or white. It just really contrasts really nice. And, um, it's a, I don't know. A lot, of, a lot of folks seem to think that that's a target area. I tend to agree with it, you know. When you do the patterns with the, you know, laser dub head or whatever it may be, you throw those eyes on, it seems like you get more beats than if they're not there. Um, there we go. Had one set of... Well, one eye fall off on one of the patterns we were fishing this past weekend. And so it was floating around there with just one eye and didn't catch any fish. If that second eye would have been on there, we would have been catching more of them. That's what I'm going with. So now we're going to peel all this stuff back. This, this collar or this overwing right here always seems to get pushed down a little bit because you have that collar going over top of it. Um, but I got a little bit of it trapped in that rubber leg there too. But I mean that's just just gonna be unavoidable really because that collar is gonna push it down. This one looks a lot more bulky than this one but once this thing gets wet it's just gonna be a seamless transition the whole way back. Uh, work all of our rubber legs out here and then there you can see it I did a lot better job and my fingers are turning purple from working with the marabou but this color compared to that one we're not going to look at that one that's oof, that's going in the junk box but uh, I can't believe I put that one on let everyone see that one that's, that's some terrible work tied with my feet but uh, there you have it. We'll give it a quick spin, and there is, you can see all the extra flash in this one. Really fun pattern to fish in. The, really fun to watch it, this one swim. Um, but, like I said, this, that is Kelly Gallup's Menage Dungeon version, or a variation off of the Triple Dungeon. Um, as always, if you guys have any questions or comments on this one, leave them with me and I'll get back to you. But thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next week.